Um, let me talk a bit about contraception. Another classic argument in, in medical ethics. Again, the medieval scholars generally tolerated contraceptive methods, although they frowned on abortifacients, i.e. those methods that work by displacing a fertilized egg. They said that they weren't forbidden, but it's, it's distasteful to, to use such methods. The arguments in favor of contraception cite a number of hadiths in which the prophet authorized the use of coitus interruptus, but these are deployed as supplementary evidence. Um, Ghazali, the great medieval scholar who defined the classical position on this issue, grounded his argument mainly in maslaha, which you recall means public interest, medical and economic arguments. Um, he says that according to the anatomists, the human form only takes shape following fertilization, hence to destroy a male or female seed has no moral significance. Uh, and this contrasts with medieval European understandings. In Europe, arguments were derived from the Bible, which unlike the Quran, does refer to contraception, um, particularly the famous passage in, in Genesis 38. But European arguments were also borrowing from medicine, and this was dominated by Aristotle's notion of how conception took place. For Aristotle, it was the male seed that was all important. It was the male seed that contained the pneuma, the spirit, and that the um, female egg was merely a passive soil and had no um, positive role in the, the determination of the, the child. And some Europeans even held that each sperm contained a complete human being in, in miniature. So the role of the woman in this Aristotelian view is purely passive. Hence, to terminate the sperm in any way was considered to be a form of murder. And Aquinas and the medieval church tradition unanimously hold this. The Muslims, however, had inherited a rather different version of the Greek tradition, specifically that associated with Galen. Galen said that fertilization entails a more or less equal contribution from both the male and the female. And this Galenic view was reinforced and conceivably even influenced um, the relevant body of hadiths. So we find the prophet saying, man is created of both, the semen of the man and the semen of the woman. The man's semen forms the bones and tendons, the woman's semen forms the flesh and the blood. Um, so medieval Islam recognized legitimate <coughs> theological and medical arguments in favor of most forms of contraception. There were also economic and social arguments that um, were de deployed. Um, Modern conditions in many ways have actually strengthened these medieval arguments. And in most Muslim countries today, contraceptives are very freely available. In Iran, for instance, they're dished out for free by the state. However, again, in some Muslim countries, there has been a slow shifting away from the medieval position, again, because of the claim that the ready availability of uh, these things leads to premarital sex and hence endangers the family. So it's an interesting case and not unique of the impact of modernity actually pushing Muslim societies into a more conservative rather than a more liberal and perhaps up-to-date view. Um, let me talk about a few other issues in medical ethics um, very briefly. 